Two AL Central rivals. Tigers on the road as Detroit goes up against the Chicago White Sox. Coming at you on 2K Sports. It's all about the American League. The Chicago White Sox, they're looking to get one in front of their home fans. A look at Carlos Quentin, no doubt getting ready for some offensive punch. Thank you for joining us. Into Autumn we go, Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. The starting pitching, we'll see Jared Watt. Take a look at Jimmy Leland's lineup. This is brought to you by Pepsi. Scouting report, John. How about some picks? Well, you talk about a veteran guy right here in Carlos Guillen that when he's healthy, he can be a big time run producer in the middle of the lineup. He hasn't had. What? And Brandon Inge at the plate. Well, lost last night for the Tigers, it being the first of three against the White Sox. Now, and these guys have only won two of their last 10 ball games. And you talk about a team struggling on the road, this is it. And the leadoff fans on board. You love the offense when it gets going that way. And a moment to check out the defensive alignment for the White Sox. Any picks here, Steve? Joe Creedy has great reactions in the hot corner here. He has great instincts to be able to move. And there goes Inge. And he is safe at second. No balls, one strike, Washburn. Ian taking that one, it's in there. Unless you stay back and really think about going the other way, you've got no chance of hitting that four seamer down and away. Swung and a ground ball to third. Too late and he is safe at second. And he's on board, close play, but he beats it out. That's a really good pitch, Steve, on an 0-2 offering to keep that down and in. That's a perfect pitcher's pitch. At this point, you've got to tip your hat to the batter. That's a solid job. And it's Miguel Cabrera now. Washburn set and delivers. That swung on and hit. Quentin's going to play it. And he cannot cut it off. Inge is going to try to score. And Inge crosses the plate. And Guillen scores as well. He'll pull in the third. That's a two RBI three bagger. Two RBIs. They certainly do make a difference. How much? Here's our WPA chart brought to you by Pepsi. I tried to go down with that 0 1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Stephen, looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind him to count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and took advantage of it. Beckham able to pull that one in. And that will not get the runner home from third base. Well, sometimes you have to hit them where they're not. That was a shot right there, but he hit it right to the second baseman for now. And on third, one out. And he checks his swing there, but it's in there for a strike on one. Swung on, hit. And that gets down. And Cabrera's scoring. Well, you never want to lose a game, but I tell you what, you drive in a couple runs, and you start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, and you produce another run in this one, your confidence is sky high. It's going to be Santiago now. And they've not. That one's drilled to short. Up with it. That's one. Over to first and safe. Very close play. They will not get the double play. Well, they get the lead runner in second, but they just couldn't turn two. No, they wanted to. Larish at the plate. Right. Cut fastball, swung on and missed, 0 and 1. No balls, one strike, Washburn. He lets that fastball go by for a called strike, 0 and 2. That's a good, hard fastball right there. Let's see if he comes back with another one. Now. Yeah, right. Still 0 and 2. Here's the delivery. Strike him out. Boy, is he glad this inning's over. And a great way to start in the first. They get three runs off a bad pitching start. Detroit leads it three to nothing. Let's take a look at the starting pitcher we've got for Detroit. And uh, as he looks at this White Sox lineup, what are they going to see from him today? A tough matchup for this right-hander on the mound against this lineup. So he's going to have to really overachieve a bit today really execute his pitches and elevate the level of his performance to be successful. And it's Johnny Damon right there in the top five and home runs. 
Line up for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. John, who do we keep an eye on? Number 10. You'd love to see how Joe Creedy's career would have played out if he didn't have so many back injuries. Here's a guy that, that can hit the ball out of the ballpark. He's one of the better third basemen that you'll ever see in baseball in his career. But the fact that he's had all these injuries, but let's see if he can stay healthy and put together a good one. And it starts here today with this game. Such a consistent, productive, professional hitter. You know, one of their best bats in the lineup, Gary. The second, there's one. Decides not to try for the double play, hangs onto it. But now we'll take a quick look at the Tigers and how they're out there positionally on the bench. Infield, outfield, Tigers in this one, Steve. Defense is critical to any team's success, and Adam Everett is critical to this team's success. He has some kind of defensive play. And Paul Canerco to bat. He's the league leader in Ribby. Now the state farm leaderboard. The batters stacking up with hits this month. Number 20. Carlos Quinton batting now. There's one down. They had two hits in the game last night. Looking to add to that today and trying to contribute to his club success. Here's the pitch. Swings at that fastball and misses. 0 and 1. Lifetime numbers 314 against the Tigers. Hit in the air to center field. And Quinton's got himself a base hit. Ramirez around third, headed for the plate. And Ramirez is home. Now well, you see the pitch down in the zone a little bit, but he got a good piece of wood on it. He drives it. What you like about that at bat is the discipline to keep the head in. Well, I'll tell you what, he changed locations, went down in the zone. It's a solid piece of hitting. And Beckham's in the box. An offense here that's going in the right direction. They've got time to put this ball game away. First, you got to get back in it. Well, we've seen some aggressive hitting on both sides early on. When you give up some of the first, you want to respond, and that's what they're doing. You're going to win in this game. You've got to adjust. The gauntlet was thrown down in the first half, and they're responding. They give the offense some credit, and what they're doing is they're telling their starting pitcher, listen, go out there, make some pitches. We've got a chance to come back in this game. Fastball got him two down. But good, great confidence right there in his stuff. Could have wasted a pitch right there, but he figured, why worry? It's a great job of finishing off the batter in a hurry. Never got a chance to see much. So Alex Rios, he'll try and keep it going. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the lead. Line drive. That's in there. Should score the runner. Again, he, he can really swing the bat. The quality approach at the plate, day in and day out, that consistency is critical to their success. Well, the hitter makes an adjustment going down on the pitch at the bottom of the strike zone and drives it here. And you get a run scored if you're in that at bat. What you want to do is make contact. He did. That pays off. Here it comes. Swung on. Liner to right. And another hit. They're really gunning right now. And a chance here to check out the league's batting leaders, courtesy of State Farm. Yeah, look at these hitters. They're really the guys with the most versatility. The ability to drive the ball to left field, to right field, and hit the fastball, the curveball, the slider. There's really not a pitch these guys can't hit. Called strike on the outside corner, 0 and 1. Batting 274, lifetime against the Tiger. Strike two, no balls, two strikes. Greedy. Lean in on that zone now. I drove in a couple runs in the ball game last night. Swings, lines this one back up the middle. And that one's put away to retire the side. So they strike for five base hits in the inning and a couple of runs. The White Sox, they're not going to concede this. They've made a pretty good chunk out of that lead. It's layered at the light. Washburn set and delivers. In the infield. Picked up by Przinski. Throw is not in time, and that will be an infield single. Got to like this, trying to make something happen. You need base runners. You got to get on and let the rest of the lineup do their thing. Good punt. Back up the middle. He picks it up. There's one. And two. Double play. The 
Pierre, we talk a lot about how important defense is to a team's success. That's living proof right there. And you keep this one in mind because it's an inning offensively that didn't happen. And Brandon Inge at the plate. He singled his last trip. And Inge settles in for the first pitch. Swung on, line to right field. And he gets it down. He's two for two now. Coming to bat. Well, with two outs and no one on base, chance of scoring a run seem pretty scarce, but they get that two-out hit. Now they have some life. And Carlos Guillen up. First pitch, A.B. begins to Guillen. Fielded by Ramirez. Throws to second. That'll be a force out and the third out. Well, they pick up a couple of hits in the inning, but do not score. And it'll be the White Sox. Bottom of the order to get things started. And it's Jim Tomey at the plate. Designated hitter, number 27, Jim Tomey. The pitch. That one swung on its line. And that gets in there. Tomey a base hit. And this rolls all the way to the wall. And that'll bring Johnny Damon to the plate. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored, top five. He delivers a line drive toward short. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in batting average, first in batting average of runners in scoring position, and they're also number one in ERA. Their pitching staff getting it done better than everybody else right now. You limit the run scored, you give yourself a chance to win. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. He's in the top echelon of hits right now, up the middle. And that hit streak will continue as that one gets through. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. This is a make or break moment in this game. Time for some decisive pitching. And this will really test his mettle, Steve. With well, the bases loaded here, trying to protect that lead, almost impossible. Well, it's going to be very tough. I mean, hitters know that you have to throw a... There's contact. He drove it well. And Rayburn... What? Runners on the move. One run scores. Find a way to get the runner in whenever you can, and that's what this offense does. Good, solid approach and attack right there. A good piece of hitting. He wanted to advance the runner. He got the ball up in the zone, got it in the air, and the runner advances. That pitch was up in the zone, and he got underneath it and drove it far enough to move that runner. I would have liked to hit, but it was a productive out. Liner between first and second, and it's through. Quentin brings him home. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. Number 15, Jordan Beckham. Well, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. I mean, now it's four straight hits. He's got to start wondering what's going on. Maybe he's tipping his pitches or they're just figuring him out. And Beckham's in the box. A swing line to left center. And yet another hit there, seeing the ball well. A look at the home runs being hit this month on our State Farm leaderboard. Boy, it's such an asset to an offense when you hit the ball in the ballpark, and these guys are clearly so important to their team. That ability to drive in a run from first base and to drive yourself in from the plate. And that's going to plate Alex Rios. And he's got a shot with the bases loaded. And they can really open up this game now with a big hit. Pitcher wants this big hit more than anyone. First pitch was a strike, 0 oh 1 now. Here's a look at the matchup numbers. 3-0-1 off the Tigers. Swing sends this one on the line to right center. And it gets down as Ramirez will come home. And Quinton scores too. And he's in there. That makes three. You get repeat opportunities. The question is what you do with it. What they're doing with it here is using it. Well, this is remarkable. He cannot get anybody out. I mean, you talk about six consecutive hits. I mean, they're going right through the lineup, one after another. Everybody's swinging the bat well. Swing and a rocket toward short. That's the second out of the inning. 
Now the runner will have to hold at second. Courtesy of State Fire. Here's a look at the American League wild card race. Getting close to the wire now. Yankees in first place. The Mariners second place. Orioles third place. Fourth place the Royals. Fifth place the Rays. And it's the Blue Jays last. What a great race we have in the American League wild card right now. And the wild card has been so good for baseball because it keeps so many teams in the hunt until the end of the season. And he'll step on first to retire the side. Boy, a manager loves to see this. They strike for an enormous inning. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. Good glimpse of the manager, Ozzie Guillen. He has to be pleased with the position he's in now. Offense is cooking. And Cabrera settles in. He tripled home a couple in his last at bat. Well, they're trailing, but uh, he's driven in two runs, so he's at least done something to help him. The first pitch. Oh, and that finds the outside corner for strike one. I uh, gotta be feeling good today. Picked up a couple hits in the game last night. Cabrera will foul that one away. Swing and a miss. Three strikes on Miguel Cabrera, and he can head back. This one tails down. Look at him just dropping off the table right there with a big break at 83 miles per hour. Just pulled the string on that one, and he was way out in front. John, you hear that uh, that changeup may be the best pitch in baseball right now, used uh, as an out pitch. Well, you have a deceptive change like that one, and you'll need two or more pitches to get by. A lot of pitchers make a living just throwing fastball changeup like that. Out the play. And that will retire Odonia. And a chance now to see where the Tigers sit in the American League ranks. Seventh in strikeouts, 11th in home runs. And they have not hit with runners in scoring position. They've really got to look at their approach at the plate. They look like they're pressing a little bit too much. It's Rayburn at the plate. He's old for five, lifetime off Washburn. And Przinsky calls for the pitch. And he takes a strike on that fastball, 1-1. One, one. Now that he's established the bottom of the strike zone, it gives him so many options. He can go to the breaking ball or climb the ladder with another fastball. Swung on and ripped towards second. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. And a good half inning there, gone in short order in this one. The White Sox still ahead. And Jim Tomei to lead it off. Well, Power was there for him in the game last night, hit a home run. We'll see if he can take advantage of some mistake pitches today. Tomei gets in. Here's the first delivery. And he swings and hits this one foul. He deals. And that's a strike. Tomei's going to have to hit with a little less of a cut here. But just a little bit out in front of that fastball on that swing. He can't connect on that. Jim Tomei up empty on a swing. Well, that's what you love to see from a pitcher. Setting guys down quickly. Keeps that pitch count down. One, two, three. Can't ask for any more efficiency than that, John. Now an excellent pitch selection there. It's Damon at the plate. And one of the top ten averages right now. Towards center field. This is a one-hopper off the wall. Damon heads for third. There's the throw. Gets in there in time. He is safe at third. Well, he's having some kind of season this year, Garrett. Really the guy leading his team's offense and some kind of offensive production. With a runner over at third and one away, I'd say Ramirez batting. One of the best batting averages in the league. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Fly ball. It is foul. Here's the pitch. That swung on line towards the gap in left center. It gets down. That's going to drive in Damon. Well, the rally here energized every new opportunity they take advantage of. Well, a key contributor in that last win. Three big hits in that game, and he's seeming to find a way again to get it started. One out, runner on at first. 
first pitch on the way. Hit hard down the right field side. It's off the wall on a hop. Ramirez is headed for third. And he's way far. And the throw. Oh, they're scrambling. Oh, boy, this is getting ugly quick. A little confusion sets in. Oh, he's out of there. Tagged out. That looked like he wanted that run. He'll hold there at second base. Credit him with a double. Runner on second. RBI opportunity for Carlos Quinn. Single home run in his last at bat. Now driven in multiple runs in this one, Gary, and, and obviously a major part of why they're ahead. Swings and misses. The good change right there. 0 and 1. Here's the delivery. Strike two. Now with no balls, two strikes. Quinton needs to protect that strike zone. Well, that's some kind of fastball down in the zone right there. The hitter has to be ready for it. He's got no chance to hit it. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. They pick up one on three hits. Strand a man. White Sox, they've got a commanding five-run lead. And if you're just joining our 2K Sports Major League Baseball broadcast with John Clark and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne. Fastball just misses. 1-0. Here's Washburn, 1-0 pitch. Lost the grip on that cutter, and it's a 2-0 count. Smash towards the middle. I come able to pull that one in. Chance here to see the pitching staffs with the lowest ERA for the month brought to you by State Farm. The White Sox number one, the Red Sox in second, third the Mariners, fourth the Angels, and at number five on the list the Rays. Let me take a look at these low ERAs and I think it really points to the fact they have depth in their pitching staff. The starting pitching and the bullpen have been getting the job done, really limiting the opposition. Takes so much pressure off the offense. And Jared Washburn delivering the strike quickly up. Look, well, Gary, that's a great four-seam fastball, but when you lay it down the heart of the plate, you know you're at risk for the ball getting tattooed. Unfortunately, the hitter didn't swing. All right. In time for the out. Well, Gary, you know, he's settling into a groove right here, Gary. That's six in a row that he set down. Two outs and nobody on. And the first pitch. Swings and misses at the fastball, 0 and 1. No balls, one strike. Washburn on the ground to short. Throws to first side is retired. No runs, no hits. Nobody crossed the plate in this half inning, and nobody left on base. The White Sox eight, Detroit three. And Beckham's in the box. He'll lead off the fourth for the home team. Number 15. Gordon Beckham. Here's the first one. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Everett picks it up. And Beckham set down. Now we can take a moment. Brought to you by State Farm. We'll take a look at the league leaders in triple. Check out Rios. He's third. Well, the triple is such an exciting play in baseball. Fans love to see guys rounding the bases, cutting the corners, using their speed, diving into the base. And this is a guy that's done it a lot so far this year, and the fans really appreciate it. Smashes that one towards the shortstop. And he gets it down. That's his third hit, three for three. That's going to bring up A.J. Pierzynski. Coming up for the Tigers in the final stretch of the season. One game left for the White Sox. That's tomorrow. They'll kick off a series with the Kansas City Royals, a little division play. A team that beat them pretty good in the last series. That'll be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. After that, they'll be playing host to the Twins, and uh, we'll get a chance to see. There's a swing and a liner. That's a great situation for some offense. Third base. Number 29, Joe. Runners on first and second with one out. First pitch to Creedy. Right something off, and it swung on and missed. 0 and 1. Well, you've got to give your offense a chance here, but you know it's so deflating when every time you go out there, they either score or they get more men on base. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. Slider, two down. It seemed like he made it easy. Three pitches, big strikeout. Can't get rid of a guy any quicker than that. Only took three, and he's gone. Here's a chance to capitalize RBI for Jim Tomey. And he's in the top ten in the league and runs. 
Throws to first in time. That's three down. No runs and a couple of hits and two left on. We're through four in Chicago. And it's Everett batting. Shortstop for Adam Everett. Washburn set and delivers. Fastball is downstairs. One ball, no strikes. The 1 0 now. 1 0 delivery is a fastball in there. 1 1. He looked like he was looking for a pitch out over the plate. That fastball down and in locked him up a little bit. He takes a fastball for a strike. Now it's 1 and 2. Swing and that's going to be hit behind the plate. Ground ball, Creedy. So Everett is retired. Here's what the White Sox schedule looks like. The series with Detroit concluding tomorrow. They look to repeat against the team they had success against in the last series. The Athletics, Northern California, in Oakland. It will be a three-game series. And there's another stop on the road trip. Los Angeles Angels will be hosting. With quite a bit of time away from home for, for them over these next several games. The fastball is in there. It's 0 and 1. He's just popping that glove with that four seam fastball, pounding the strike zone. Hot shot towards the hole. He's out at first base. Nice play on the cover. Uh, that's a well executed play right there. Gary hustled over, got the first base. He touched the bag. Thought he might have had a strike out there, but he's involved in the out anyway. And Carlos Guillen up. Hitting 320, head up the middle. Save your arm. Do it by pitching only eight times in one inning, three outs. The White Sox still ahead. And it's Johnny Damon now. Top five AL in run scored. Johnny Damon. First pitch on the way to Damon. Fastball in there for a called strike. He's looking a little confused out there right now. He just swung at a pitch that was in the dirt. Here's the pitch. Well hit towards the middle. That's one down. Get a break here and a chance to look at the leaders in slugging team wise. Brought to you by Alexei Ramirez now. One away. Right there in the top five in home runs. The pitch up the middle. Oh, look out. And so Ramirez retired. But a quick recovery that time gets the out. Paul Bernardo. And it's Paul Canerco now. What a year for him. Top five in homers. And he starts Canerco out. There's a swing, line drive, center field, and he gets it down. That's his third hit, three for three. Take a peek here at the league home run leaders, courtesy of State Farm. Well, this is a list of hitters that strikes fear in the opposition pitching. They have to because they know with one swing of the bat, they can change the score of the game. That's going to bring Carlos Quinton up. Last night, a loss for the Tigers. They want to even this three-game series here today, try and give themselves a chance to break the tie in game three against the White Sox. When these guys have only won two of their last ten ball games, and you talk about a team struggling on the road, this is it. Perhaps this one foul to the right. He delivers a line drive towards short. Throws on to first side is retired. So out of the inning, only eight pitches thrown. That's pretty efficient. The White Sox eight, Detroit three. Things will start getting a little more difficult. Third man in the lineup coming up. For those of you just joining in, I'm Gary Thorne along with John Cruck and Steve Phillips. We bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports.
And here's Miguel Cabrera to lead it off. And he starts Cabrera out. Up the middle. Washburn. What a way. Late season baseball. Here's what the White Sox have coming up. Series with Detroit concluding tomorrow. They'll take on a team they're confident about. The Oakland Athletics will be hosting. That'll be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then they'll be off to take on the Angels in that bat of Bobby Abreu. Team they beat in the previous series between the two. So they'll be out and about over a good bit of that upcoming schedule. And Ordonia settles in first pitch. Oh, uh, That's off the plate away, 1 0. Oh. Here's Washburn, 1 0 oh pitch. Strike one. It's now one ball, one strike. He watched that fastball that was in there. 1 1 on the way. Strike Started two. to go around, but a called strike, 1 and 2. Maglio Ordonez not fooled by that one and the count is even. The pitch. This one swung on line towards the middle. And that's a base hit. Ordonez on. Now batting. Well, he waited for that one to get deep in the zone and he put a good swing on it. Now with one out, let's see if they try to move him along. It's Rayburn at the plate. Runner at first with one down. And Przinski calls for the pitch. Starts him off with one in there for a strike. When you can hit your spot with that kind of movement down and into the hitter, you're way ahead of the game. And Jared Washburn delivering the strike quickly up. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. And in there, he's two for three today. Now Here's a prime production for opportunity Tigers. for the Tigers. Second base, number 39, Ramon Santiago. That's a really good pitch, Steve, and an 0-2 offering to keep that down and in. That's a perfect pitcher's pitch. At this point, you've got to tip your hat to the batter. That's a solid right job. First pitch, fastball, 0-1. No balls, one strike, hit up the middle. And he's got it. Over to Konerko. That's the second out. And they score him. Solid approach at the plate. Got a pitch that he could do something with it that he could handle, and he picks up an RBI. Good job. Blarish at the plate. Well, they're making a stab at it. Trouble is that that one is hit well. Quentin's there. And that's going to do it in this half inning. Well, they score once on two hits. The veteran manager, Jim Leland. This club's moving in the right direction Number offensively. 15. Last half Jordan. inning, pitching is now Beckham. critical to give his guys a shot. They try and get this tied. And Beckham's in the hot shot towards the hole. Now so that'll bring Alex Rios to the plate. And right now, Number top 51. five and runs batted in in the lead. Alex. Runner on first base, nobody out. And he starts Rios out towards the middle. And it's in there. He continues to get on base. That's hit number four in this game. And a chance now to see where the Tigers sit in the American League ranking. 11th in home runs, 12th in batting average of runners in scoring positions. And while the hit numbers, they need to improve right there. The offensive production, not quite what they're looking for. They need to make more contact and put the ball in play. Fantastic chance here. Swung on, that is hit. And in there for a base hit. He's three for four today. That'll bring Joe Freedy up. Uh, now he's surrendered three straight hits. He's got to bounce back and get this guy. He needs an out. First pitch to Freedy. Swing and a miss on that curveball. It's 0 and 1. Batting 274, lifetime against the Tigers. Strike two, no balls, two strikes. Greedy, he'll lean in on that zone now. Now his two RBIs helped contribute to the offense in last night's ball game. Joe Creedy comes up empty, a swing, no contact. 
But when you're getting guys out with three pitches, you know you're dominating. That's a time when you know you are definitely in the zone, and he was on that at bat. Here's a chance to capitalize RBI for Jim Tomey. And for RBIs, he's one of the best in the league. Swing and a miss, and he's behind that pitch. 0-1. On the way. And that's a strike. Tomei's going to have to hit with a little less of a cut here. Well, that fastball right there, he just blew it high. Down on strikes there. Nice piece of pitching work. So Johnny Damon thinks RBI. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops in run score. Top five. First pitch on the way to Damon. Swing and a miss for strike one. Well, one of the offensive leaders in the game this year, and obviously a guy who's getting the job done for this offense is somebody they've really come to rely upon. Strike two. No balls. Two strikes. Veteran Damon, though, he'll cut it down and try to just poke it out there. One and two. Let's see if he can make some adjustments in the game today. He struck out twice last night and got fooled at the plate. So he's got to wait a little bit longer. The one-two pitch. Strike three. Damon on a swing and a miss turned away. Well, they load the bases on the strength of three base hits, but no runs. Next up. For those of you just coming on board, Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Cruck bringing you Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. The first pitch. Plays off a called strike. 0 and 1. Well, Gary, with this big a league here in the seventh inning, it's incumbent upon the pitcher to throw strikes. Get outs right now. Hit on the ground over to shortstop. He's out. One away. There'll be more coming your way next Wednesday. Going to be Chase Utley and the Philadelphia Phillies. They'll be playing host to the visiting Atlanta Braves. Going to be starting at 7 o'clock Eastern. He swings. It's a ball to right field. And it drops the base hit. That'll bring Brandon Inge up. Opposite field hitting. It is a classic piece of baseball. Especially on that inside pitch. It keeps the defense off guard when you can muscle the inside pitch to right field. The 0-0 delivery of fastball taken for a strike. Okay, Gary, one out here in the seventh inning. I mean, you have to like the way this is going. They're looking good. The pitcher's throwing strikes. The defense making plays. They've got a big lead. Everything feels good. Fastball in there. Struck him out on number two. You know, fastball in the high 80s isn't overpowering, but it's not always about velocity. Sometimes it's about location. He knows how to use that fastball. And the first pitch lined right at the second baseman. Throw over to second base, a force to retire the side. So no runs on one hit and nobody left on. The White Sox still ahead. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. Number 10, Alexi. Ramirez. Here it comes. Swing and a drive, deep left center. And Raver gets there. Now State Fire brings you the extra base hit leaders for this month. And here's Paul Canerco. Had a base hit his last time up. Base is empty, one out. And he starts Canerco out. Here's a swing and a liner towards first. And Cabrera gloves that one. Here's what's next for the Tigers. One game left for the White Sox. That's tomorrow. We'll kick off a series with the Kansas City Royals. A little division play. A team that bested them in the last series between the two. That's a three-game series. After that, they'll be playing host to the Twins. And uh, we'll get a chance to see Delman Young. Great series there. So a lot of home games on the way. The fans will have a chance to see their guys many times over the next couple of weeks. And in there. He gets that one down. That's his third hit. Three for five. That's going to bring Gordon Beckham up. But a big two out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. This man's doing what he has to do to help this team win. Two outs and a man on first. First pitch. That one's drilled to short. And they get the force at second that time. That'll do it. Quick half inning there. It's over five pitches. The White Sox eight. Tigers four. Things will start getting a little more difficult as we look to the third man to lead it off. And here's 
Miguel Cabrera to lead it off. Grounded out his last time through. Miguel Cabrera. Washburn set and delivered. It's now 0-1. Watch that fastball go by. Uh, it's getting late right now. They're down a bunch, so th they need a big inning here. They can't wait till the ninth to try to come all the way back. They need to try to do something now. And with two strikes on him now, Cabrera needs to be protective of that zone. When you throw the fastball, that's where you want it to go. Now you can elevate a pitch next time around. Headed for the middle. And he gets that one down. His second hit, two for four today. For That's going to bring Maglio Ordonez up. Boy, I don't know in that count, Steve. Maglio number one, Ordonez. the fact that he swung's kind of a surprise. I don't know how he hit that. Where he was. You're right. On an 0-2 count, you have to protect the plate. Sometimes it's a defensive swing, but sometimes it works out. Fastball in there for a called strike. Better to go after the fact. A line drive towards the hole. Drops right between them. Going to be a base hit. Now Fantastic batting. chance here. Here's how the Central Division is shaping up late going. It's brought to you by State Farm. It's the White Sox in first. In second place, it's the Royals. Third place goes to the Indians. In the fourth spot, it's the Twins. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Washburn set and Ball delivers. And that runs high, 1-0. Well, he tried that four-seam fastball up in the zone to get him the chase. Tough pitch to lay off of. Good job by the hitter. And he comes back with one in there, and it's 21. Well, purpose pitch right there. He gets the strike right on it, goes up and in, and it opens up the entire strike zone now. The one two on its way. Whoa. And it remains one and two. Fastball in there, called third strike. One up. It's the best pitch in baseball. A fastball down and away. If you can master that, you can be successful. He's successful. Here's the first pitch. A swing and a foul off to the right side. No balls, one strike, Washburn. Oh, one is a circle change that's over for a called strike. Look, Gary, with one out right here, they still have time. Hit up the middle. It's scooped up. That's one out. And that's two. A double play. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. The White Sox maintaining their lead. Taking account of the ball game, there's Ozzie Guillen. Inning, that pitching gave up nothing. That's what he wants to see. Now looking for the offense to try and expand the lead. Hit hard to second. So Rios is set down. Number 12. Gonna be Przinsky. Three for four thus far. One out, nobody on. First pitch on the way. Fouled away. Line towards second. Out number two. Number That is Joe Creedy at the plate. Struck out swinging last time. And that one fouled off by Creedy. Here's the pitch. Swing and lined up the middle. And Creedy's got himself a single. So Jim Tomey coming up and a look at the hitters, the on-base percentage leaders for the month, courtesy of State Farm. Getting on base is a philosophy. It's a mental state. It's a really an approach, and these guys understand that. They understand they have to do whatever they can to get on. They have the toughest at bats of any hitters in the major league. Swung on and ripped towards second, and that one's put away to retire the side. No runs on a hit. Is a familiar face, Jim Leland. Designated hitter. Trying to feel what he's thinking right now. It's a very tough game. Uh, maybe 
maybe thinking about some adjustments as we move forward. And here's the first one. First pitch of fastball. That's in there for a strike. I think right now offensively you've got to start getting base runners. Get as many as you can. I mean, you're down a ton, so you don't need big hits. You don't need home runs. You need base runners. Strike three called on the fastball. Like the ability to move your pitches around within the zone, to change a hitter's eye level and keep them off balance are critical to success. Very successful there. Three pitches and a strike. It's layered at the plate. A look at the lifetime numbers. He's 260 against the White Sox. That's foul back behind the plate. Strike two. Swing and a miss on the fastball, second out in the end. I just don't think you can make it any easier than that. Three pitches, up, down, see you later. He's already back at the bench. Here's the first pitch. Hit on the ground, this could be the end. And that's going to be a base hit forever. He's trying for second. Now brought to you by State Farm, the pitching staffs who are making hitters earn their way. The White Sox, number one. The Royals in second. Third, the Mariners. The Tigers, fourth. And we've got the Twins, who are number five. Well, you better be swinging today. And, you know, as a hitter, you like facing guys like this who don't walk a lot of hitters because you know they're going to be around the plate. And they're going to give you a chance to swing the bat. Thing is, these two pitching staffs, they're not just going to throw it down the middle. They hit corners. They just don't walk anyone. So they're going to be ahead in counts. you got to be aggressive against pitchers like this and swing early in the count. And it's in there. Strike three call. That's it. A good all-around effort, Gary, by the White Sox today allows them to get the win. They've got to be feeling pretty good about themselves. Now time to recognize our Pepsi Clutch performer. Great mound work, Jared Washington. And, and for our listeners' benefit, and for you also, Gary, I would have liked to avoid some sort of cliche, but it never stops being true. You can't have enough starting pitching in Major League Baseball. And he gave a command performance today, and this one should... And Steve, they're able to win this game rather handily. A little bit of home cook it here that was right on from the beginning. Now, Gary, as a player, you always like having the 10th man out there, and these fans provided that today. They were into it. And until next time, this is Gary Thorne, along with John Crock and Steve Phillips. We'll catch you at the yard.